Uh, in this lecture, we're going to design a spacey pad. The sort of takeaway from this lecture will be using different envelopes, different modulations for the separate parts in Silent. Because remember that we have part A, which is in red here, and then we have part B. And we can create a sort of slow, evolving pad using different modulation for the different parts. And that's what kind of gives it this sort of spacey feel to it. All right, so let's get right into it. The first thing that we're going to do is set up our polyphony. We're going to increase polyphony to 8 or so uh, because we want some options for playing some, some bigger chords with multiple notes. So we'll set up polyphony to 8. And then we're going to have two oscillators in part A. They're both going to be sawtooth waves. And they're both going to have 8 voices. This is a kind of standard fare for the pads. Uh, and we're going to detune these just a little bit as well. Sorry if that was a little loud. Uh, pull this down just for now. Cool, so that's, a, that's kind of a nice pad sound. But what we're going to do here now is set up the envelope for part A right here in the center. We're going to create a slow attack and um, a decay that's maybe a little bit higher than the attack and bring the sustain down a little bit add a little release and this will give it a little more soft soft uh, soft edge maybe I want to increase the decay a little bit cool alright so that's good now since we're here we'll copy this envelope select C button there go to part B and paste that envelope but now what we want to do is alter this a little bit. So I'm going to increase this attack time way up towards the top, maybe about there, like that. And then we're going to bring the sustain level down a little bit as well. Now let's set up this oscillator, B1. We'll leave it on a sawtooth wave, um, add a couple of voices, maybe not as many, maybe more like four. And we're going to uh, bring the note up to seven. What this will do is transpose this part of the oscillator to be a seventh, uh, which is like a fifth chord, a fifth interval. Uh, if we play the two together right now, let's see what we hear. So you can hear there, we hear the original, you know, the first three from part A. I'm playing three notes, so that's why I say three. And you'll hear part B sort of sweep in with the uh, with the fifth interval coming out there. It's still a little loud, isn't it? So that's kind of the movement that we want there between our two parts. Uh, as you know, the f the first part fades in and kind of starts to decay, and as that's decaying, part B, the yellow part here, will start to fade in there, and that's because our attack time is longer on part B. So it takes longer for this one to arrive on the scene than it does part A. Let's hear that one more time. Now with part B, I wanted to tune this quite a bit because we want to have a little bit of a sort of phasey sound with this. So I'm going to solo this so we can just listen to part B and get this detune knob right. We want to really hear the movement of those oscillators sort of colliding as they're detuned. Okay, cool. Now it's time to set up some filters. So we'll go back to part A and we'll set up filter A first. On filter A, we'll do a low pass filter. Input will be part A, going to be filtering out oscillators A1 and 2. Low pass filter, and we'll find the right spot for this cutoff frequency here. We'll solo part A so we can hear it. Right there sounds good to me. And then part B, we're going to do a high pass filter. We want input select to be on B. And we'll keep this soloed, so we'll find the right uh, cutoff frequency for part B. Just 
just like that. So now in tandem, this is what we hear. Cool. So we're getting pretty close, but now we're going to use some modulation here. So let's start with envelope 1. We'll set to the cutoff frequency of filter A. And we'll create kind of a, a nice long delay on this one. And just increase the amount just a little bit. When we hit, hit the chord, part A will uh, sweep down in its cutoff frequency just a little bit. Let's solo part A here so we can hear that and get this fine tuned. Maybe just about like that. I like that. That's not too bad. And then in envelope uh, 2 here, modulation envelope 2, we'll go to the cutoff of filter B. And uh, we're going to do sort of the opposite. We want the cutoff frequency to go up. So I'm going to increase this attack time very high, like maybe like way up to here. And then uh, set this destination knob to right about here. We'll solo part B so we can just hear the effects of this one on part B. Now you'll hear that when I release the key there, it jumps back down to the original cutoff frequency, which is not what we want. So we're going to have to increase this release time a little bit so that, so that we don't get that pull off. Just like that, okay? So that's cool. So now we have filter B sweeping up in its cutoff frequency, and it's on a high pass filter, so it'll sort of just push up all the way to those high frequencies. And we're sort of doing the opposite thing with uh, the other modulation envelope, which is on cutoff A, which we have a low pass filter on. And so this one is slowly bringing that cutoff frequency down. Now the other thing that I like to do with pads, just to get them moving a little bit more, is to set the mix A and B for uh, LFO1 here. And just to create a little bit of tremolo on the pad, just makes it sound a little bit more, I don't know, it has a little bit more character to me. So we'll set it to mix A and B and put the rate maybe at something around here. Let's hear that. Just fine tuning these a little bit, and you can hear a little bit of that tremolo kind of movement. Great. Now what we can do is add some chorus and some reverb to it to just make it even bigger. Uh, I'm going to reduce this dry wet knob a little bit, add some depth, and on reverb, the pre-delay is probably fine there. We might want to increase the damp control a little bit and uh, reduce the dry wet as well. So let's hear that. Not too much chorus. I want to hear a little bit more of part B here, so I'm going to uh, reduce this cutoff frequency a little bit because it's getting a little too uh, filtered too quickly. And maybe increase the decay time a little bit too on the first envelope here. Now, if you really want to accentuate the spaciness of this, um, we can add a phaser as well. I'll make that rate really slow. Now 
have a sort of spacey, evolving pad. And we accomplish that by setting up the two parts to be modulated by different sources and also to have different envelope shapes so that they sort of move in and out of each other. All right, great work. See you in the next lecture.